give you a little more like hands yeah. free if you're going to be sure. typing. All right, welcome back everyone. This is the final session of um, uh, the CTIS. And um, it's uh, an absolute delight uh, to introduce you to Professor Viraj Kumar, who is here from uh, the Indian Institute of Science, the Kotak uh, AIML Center. Um, and I'm going to take up a lot of your time if I start talking about everything that Viraj is up to. So I'm going to uh, let him take it away. But I should say that uh, Viraj has just so much experience teaching programming at various levels and I've just learned so much over even coffee table conversations with him about this so he's just like really the best person to talk about these kinds of assessments which are new age and are keeping up with the avalanche of uh, LLM technologies that are hitting all of us right now so I can't wait for your session Viraj thank you so much for agreeing to be here and doing this for us. Thank you Neil that's a very kind introduction. Uh, feel free to come closer forward. Uh, I'm, I'm not dangerous, I think. I'm not contagious. <laughs> Feel free uh, to come forward. Okay, um, <clears throat> so thank you for inviting me here. It's my first CTIS and I hope I get a chance to come again. Uh, it's been so, so lovely interacting with everyone. Uh, so uh, I'll tell you first uh, my motivation for uh, coming up with these refute questions. This uh, PDF we'll come back to. You all have a copy of it uh, in front of you or you will soon get one. Uh, I will give you my context uh, to this. So as uh, Nilhara just mentioned, uh, I teach uh, introductory programming uh, at uh, uh, IASC uh, and I also do a lot of faculty training, uh, mainly for computer science faculty. So happy to meet some of the faculty who have been part of uh, our previous uh, sessions. So um, what we do at IISC, given that all this uh, Gen AI is now available to them, uh, we tell them on day one, look, this exists. This, this, these kinds of tools exist. We want you to use them. So I'm actually going to write some code here using generative AI. I have a, uh, this, uh, one of these AI assistants called GitHub Copilot um, uh, installed on my system. So you will see that if when I try and solve a question, which is fairly non-trivial, it's the type of question which, before Gen AI, if my student could do on her own or his own, I would say, wonderful, that's great. You know, you've actually learned something. More likely, you've learned it before coming to me, and I've just, I can take the credit for the fact that you could solve that problem now. Uh, but now I can't be so sure. Okay, so we're going to write a little function, a little Python function. I know not everyone is comfortable with Python. That's okay. Uh, you will just observe what I type and what you see the AI suggesting. Okay, so I'm going to write a little maths function I'll, uh, that calculates the next prime number given a number n. So if I give you a number like 15, what's the next prime number? 17. If I give you 17, 19. Good. So we all know that. So let's see if the AI can figure that out, right? So I say define a function called next prime that given a number n, I, wow, yeah? I mean, it's done it all, right? I mean, I, I didn't even finish talking and it has, the only thing is it put an extra bracket because it didn't even wait for me to put that bracket. Um, and it's done that. Okay, so now is my dilemma, right? I, pre-Gen AI, I used to feel that if my student can create such artifacts, such complex artifacts, then I think they're doing something very meaningful, somebody will eventually pay them for doing these kinds of things. This is a valuable skill, it's an intellectual endeavor. Great. But who will pay you for writing this when the AI has done that? Right? So maybe I should ask other questions, right? So I'll tell you just as a quick preview, this is not related to what we are going to be core discussing today, but just as a preview of some of the things that we are looking at now, right? Um, <clears throat> so I say, okay. If somebody gives you what they want that's so clear, like next prime is very clear in terms of what you are looking for, right? Even if it's just two words, it's very clear what we mean. We could all figure it out, right? Let's play the game slightly differently. I'm going to think of, again, a function. Uh, 
I'm going to give you once again a number n, and I want the next number, right? Now, what do I mean by the next number? My AI is guessing that, well, maybe you mean n plus 1, but no, that's not what I want, right? I have a next number in my head, right? So I'm going to, we're going to play the game. I'm going to tell you what the next number is for a few examples, OK? And I want to see if you or the AI can figure out first what is in my head, OK? So feel free to shout out when you know what it is. Now, in order to help the AI along, I'm going to write the examples in the style that we usually write in coding. Right? Uh, in Python code, this is called a doc test. Right? And it has a special format. It says, like, for example, you should read this as for example, next of one, it is suggested next of one. I actually don't like its suggestion. I'm going to take next of two. Okay? Um, and next of two, it thinks should be three. And I say, no, that's not the function I have in mind. I want four. Okay? And so I say, okay, next of four, I want, no, I want 16. Ah, so you know, right? So you think I want square, but no, that's not what I want, right? Um, I'll give you an example, right? Next of 12, you still think square, but, but I want five. Oh, and next of 21, I also want five. Now, do you know? N plus one? Factorial? No. Oh, I heard something. Sum of square of digits. Right? Okay. The AI is like, I don't know. Okay? So, now how, this is the, the dilemma I have. How do I convey this to my students so that they get it, but the AI doesn't? And the idea is there are some problems in the world that humans may be good at figuring, and the AI is not, and so there's a hope for humanity, right? And I'm exploring the space, okay? But I don't know how much hope there is for humanity, because let me tell you, right? There's a dangerous word here, and that dangerous word is because, right? So if I say because, Two times two is two, no, two, not two times two, two to the power two, okay? Actually, that's not even the right way of writing to the power of two, but it's okay, right? And this is 16 because, you see it's figuring out, and this is this because, no, 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 you see, it's too eager because one square plus two square is five. And this is because 2 squared plus 4. Yeah, now you got it. Now can you write the code? No? It, it's, that's not the right code, right? Okay, so there's hope for humanity. Right? Are you sure? Because there's more. Right? Look, something you guys in CT are very good at, right? Step by step thinking. Step one. Now, those of you who know programming will probably recognize this is a really good idea. Okay? And now, step two. I, I never told it to do this. It's just doing this. Now, The AI can do this much today. By the time you graduate students from school and send them to us, and we graduate them from IISA or wherever, and we send them out to the world, this is going to be much better. We have to prepare our students for a world where these things are capable of solving problems like this. Now, is it correct? How many of you uh, can read Python code? I know that's not everybody, but there's enough of us here. There are enough eyeballs staring at this. Can someone see a mistake? I haven't even looked at it. I've just been doing this. I haven't really been paying attention. 
Do you think it's correct? Anyone who reads Python code, is it correct? Is it not correct? It's correct? Is it correct because the AI generated it? I do not want my students to have this attitude towards the AI. I want them to doubt, to critique AI. And increasingly, a lot of the stuff they're going to see in the world is going to be AI generated. And I want my students to critique it. So my students, I can try and do something with. What I would really like to do, and that's why I'm here, is I would like to find a way in which we can develop this ability to critique as early as possible, because I don't think we can afford to wait until they come to undergraduate. Right? I think this is something that can be done and is actually quite easy to do at the school level, and that's where I want us to focus our attention. Right? And then, then I want to hear from you if you think this is even feasible to do. Okay, but this is, I just wanted to set this as an example, right? So those of us who are not programmers, whatever it is those programmers were doing, when, they were, when I asked them, is it correct or not, that's the skill. Now you can ask the same skill, not for code, but for a maths derivation, for a, a English essay, is it well constructed? You know, the AI, the chat GPT can produce an essay. Is that, is that your voice? Is that, is that speaking, is it, is it, is it, is it aesthetically pleasing? You can ask it to write poetry. Have you seen the kind of poetry it writes? People are very impressed. Actually, I think it's terrible. I mean, I don't like the kind of poetry. I don't like the way it rhymes things. I, I find it very forced, the rhyming. Whatever, I mean, you know, whatever. We can all have different reasons for developing uh, a critique for these things, and we can connect that to our curriculum, okay? So that's the motivation behind what we're doing, right? And what I'm trying to suggest to all of you is that we can take the types of problems that we typically do ask our students, where we're asking them to create an artifact. And we were just saying, oh, we're worried in the panel discussion, we're worried that AI can also produce those artifacts. Maybe this is an opportunity for us. At this moment in 2024, when the AI is still not very good at everything, we have an opportunity, a moment in time, where we can introduce students to examples of AI-generated uh, artifacts that are plausible. They look right, beautiful, but they're not perfect in some sense. Maybe those artifacts are sometimes very good. They may be even be correct. So we have to build their ability to critique. And the way we build it is we give them examples of something that isn't perfect, and we say, where is the mistake? Right? So simple CT-like exercise. If our students know the idea of a median of three numbers, here, somebody has told you an algorithm, a step-by-step -step recipe for calculating the median. I'm telling you it's wrong. But do you agree that it kind of looks right? I mean, isn't that the kind of things you would do? You would check, no? I mean, hey, if, if B is the number in between, then the median is B. If C is the number in between, then the answer is C, the algorithm has to be A, no, Khatam? Right? It looks right, right? So we design these to look right. Our goal is to get students to doubt things simply because they look right. We want them to develop a greater, a deeper critique. Because the AI today is not going to make this mistake. If you ask it to find the median of three, it knows how to calculate the median of three. Okay, it's going to mug up and re reproduce a perfectly correct solution. But can we get our students to tell us why this is wrong? What would that look like in this context? What kind of an answer would you accept that a student believes, uh, has, uh, that you would believe a student if she has found the mistake? What would, what would she have to say to you before you say, yes, I, I believe you, I, I know you found the mistake? What would she have to say? If she f points to a line that's wrong, is there a line that's wrong? Is, is this wrong? Is this wrong? No. 
There could be other possibilities. So we can accept that, right? There could be other possibilities. Here is one way we can make it very easy for ourselves as teachers and also very concrete for our students. Tell me an A, a B, and a C for which if I follow this recipe, I do not get the right answer. Can you find such an A, B, and a C for which this recipe does not give you the median? Yeah. Nine, six, and three. The rest of us can check. Nine is A, so they're in descending order, right? Nine is the biggest, six, then three. So this condition is not true. This condition is not true. So they will return A, which is nine. And that's not the median. Very good. Right? Do we, next, next year, we want to make a different version. Same median, we can just change some of these things around and we can get another one or we can pick a different problem. Something else that art would be just to make it look right for somebody who has a superficial understanding of it. Right? We can even take a correct solution and just make a mistake in it. The type of mistake that maybe students typically make. Who knows about the kinds of mistakes students typically make? You. <laughs> You are very familiar with the kinds of mistakes students make. So you can take the kinds of misconceptions that students typically make and rather than saying, I want to hear the student's perspective on this, rather than saying, dear students, please solve this problem, here's a solution. Tell me where the mistake is. Right? right? And maybe in some cases, tell me like what numbers will make it go wrong or you know what fact it's a historical analysis. Which fact about Akbar is incorrect here? Or whatever. I don't, I'm not a history teacher, so I don't know what would be a good question to ask in a history context. right? But I'm just telling you that I think the form factor uh, could be used in many ways. Here I have two examples for you. And the rest of the time, I really want us to devote to doing this activity. Okay? I have two examples here. Of, I've just taken some class 7th. Uh, this is a variation of some question that I found in the NCRT book in class 7th mathematics. So I hope I'm correct in identifying this as a class 7th problem. Okay? Uh, so here is a question. Now, to create one of these refute questions, as I said, one way you can do it is you can just write the correct answer first. Okay? You can write it yourself, you can ask your AI to answer it, whatever, right? Um, so you get a correct answer, right? And that's hopefully I've done that correctly. Now, based on your experience, you make a mistake. I want you to just pause and compare the two examples, example one and example two, and I would like someone to help us understand the difference between example one and example two, the nature of the mistake in example one versus the mistake in example two. You also have the correct solution to compare against. Yeah. Yeah, the brackets is definite, right? Now, here we're just pattern matching. <laughs> we can see that there, there were no brackets. Here, there's brackets. So we're pattern matching, and we can tell you where the mistake is, right? But can you go a little bit higher than that? I mean, fundamentally, the nature of the mistake in example one is quite different. So there is there is the, the there's the board mass, the priority of operators. Okay, let, let's ask, answer the other way. What is the nature of the mistake in the second example? Yeah. I can't hear. A little louder? Instead of subtracting it, right? So the way I would characterize it is that this is a word problem, right? In example two, the student has gone from the words to the mathematical formulation correctly and made a mistake in the calculation part, the boring part, <laughs> right? The part that calculators are very good at. Right? The, the, the thing that is valuable about mathematics, I feel, that gets lost, unfortunately, a lot in school education is mathematics is a language for modeling 
things in the world. Why, why do our students struggle with word problems? Because of that step. It's going from the words to the maths. After you put the maths, tuck, 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 we're all very good at solving it. With or without calculators, we can all solve it. Right? It's the mistakes happen there. So in that sense, I think ref example one is in some sense more interesting as a refute problem than example two. You can put the mistake any way you like. If you want to be really cruel, you put more than one mistake. Right? Uh, but, um, you know, uh, I, I just wanted to give you these as two possibilities. I'm not sure if always one is better than the other, in one type of question, but I wanted to share this as two examples. So once again, I, you are jointly representing many more domains of knowledge than I know. So I would like you to think about this, right? Can you write in your domain, the one that you're most interested in or comfortable in, pick a domain, right? And then I would like you for the rest of the exercise to work with a team mate and share your answers. Have them solve your refute question, and you solve theirs. So hopefully you're sitting next to somebody with whom you speak some commonality, some, or you can agree, or you can teach them something about your domain and they can teach you something about theirs, right? How about that, right? So is the idea clear, right? I would like you to similarly write a problem statement that you think is interesting. Try and create, a, inject a mistake, inject a mistake, and then your colleague will check your solution and you check theirs, okay? And then as time permits, I will ask some of you to share, some pairs to share some of your work with us. Is that okay? I like this community. I don't have to ask you to work in pairs. They're very naturally formed pairs, like very good. You can even form tri triples. There's three of you who don't have a partner. So, <laughs> yeah, first bit is individual, and then in pairs, yeah. So uh, I know the colleagues online, uh, I don't have an exercise for you, but I hope you can see my PDF. I will um, keep it here. Please do try this yourself too. And then I will take a look at what's on the chat later on. Thanks.
So again, just, just to clarify, usually what I do is uh, I take questions that are of the traditional type where I'm expecting students to write something, to create something. And I'm saying instead of creating something, critique what I'm giving you. So move from create to critique, right? Uh, you know, that, that's the idea. So you, know, you can just reuse the same uh, statement and then just give them a wrong solution, right? So have you got some examples? No, I was just telling you. Oh, I made it because I didn't something. Oh, okay. You got something? Yeah. Right. Who's who going to cross check or what? Lamb is finished. So why did you cross check? You didn't sound here at all. Okay, I agree. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
Examples uh, uh, presented here. I'm not sure how best we can do it. Can we use the chalkboard here? Um, and can uh, can this be raised? Uh, and the camera is there for the online uh, audience, right? Uh, she will be presenting. You have to ask her what she would like. Uh, so we'll get one 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 student presentation and one uh, teacher presentation. Who would may I request one teacher in this side of the room to suggest anyone? Front row, back row, anyway. Just, we'd like to see two examples. So that's going to present. Okay. Come, all yours. So, uh, can this be raised? This, uh, well, uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Or, yes, you have that. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. The camera can record on that side. Excellent. <coughs> so you want to describe the problem first? That you're going to... No? Why don't you? Uh, will you uh, like, at least write the question out? I'll, I, I, since I remember it, uh, yeah, uh, I, will, uh, I will describe it for, for everyone. Also for the online audience. <laughs> So the, the question is, uh, again, a fairly typical maths word problem. And again, the, the, the thing I would like everyone to pay attention to is what the question author has chosen as the place to insert the mistake. Right? Again, as a, as a teacher, remember this, author, this is a question authored by a student. So this is the student's conception of what, uh, where, where the mistake should be. A teacher has an advantage over the student because the teacher gets to see many mistakes over uh, over your professional career, right? But here we've got a question. Again, it's a fairly typical um, uh, maths word problem involving ages of people. And um, 
or no? Oh, exponents, okay, has God? Sorry, yeah, yeah no, go ahead. Uh, in the meantime, just to save some time, can I request, sir, you can start putting your, uh, we'll move the standee out of the way. We, this is called parallel processing, yeah. right? Uh, and we have, yeah, we have no contention because there's no shared resources. We have more than one piece of chalk. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Uh, which one? Just remind me which one are you doing? Oh, yeah, why didn't. Why? Okay. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll, we'll. Good afternoon, everyone. So, one of the learners is claiming that root 3 into root 3 is equal to root 3, right? So, let's see his her solutions. Right. Uh, so, what are the mistakes here? Yeah, that's true. Root 3 into root 3 is equal to 3, we know, right? So, we can't take root 3 as a common, right? Already, the, exp the given expression is in the form of factorized from our product forms. So, we generally take common where the given expression either is in the form of addition or subtractions. So, we can't take common. But most of the students, they end up doing, and they, they find hard to find out these mistakes. So this is one example. Very good. I just want to make one comment. So I really like this example because, again, you know, we explicitly teach certain things that you can pull out with uh, plus, you can pull out with minus. We never ask. Can you do it with multiplication? We never show that if you do it with multiplication, you can get nonsense. Now, what is the idea that a student might form is that you can always pull out, right? No matter what the operators, they can they saw it work with plus, they saw it work with minus, and here is an opportunity to clear up this misconception that it doesn't work when you do it with, with this thing, right? If you were to ask this, uh, I would suggest asking it in the following way, that because this is really nicely written, I would even just number the steps. Step one this, step two this, step three this, and then the question can be, which step is incorrect, right? Where is the mistake, right? Uh, on the back of your sheet, the last part, uh, I wanted us, we, we're not gonna have time to do this, but this is, uh, this is very nice because it sort of allows us to consider things like this. If you were to introduce such questions in your uh, class, if you did put it in this form, it might be easier for your students and it might be easier for us to grade afterwards, right? To evaluate and more importantly, to give feedback, right? So for example, it may be that certain steps are perfectly fine, but if the student marked it as wrong, it's an opportunity for us to help the student understand, you know, why did you mark that? Was it just a guess because we told you you heard there was something was wrong, so you had to make a guess and it was just a guess? Or did you have another misconception that we didn't get a chance to do? So it's very useful to sort of structure it that way. Thanks so much. Yeah, yeah. Yes, are you done? Oh, now we're going to take a look at this one. Oh, this one, you changed the question on me. Oh, what is this one now? You have to explain this one now. Uh, you have to. Come on. They're, not, they're, they're friendly people. Okay, okay. I don't want to force you. Don't want to force you. Okay, so we're going to take a look at sum of uh, half a number and 7 is 11. Okay. And then, uh, so what is the number, right? Okay. Yeah. Yes, they yeah. yeah. Say they consider this two as a whole for this. And because of that, it directly transposed to on that side. That's a common mistake which we are finding from class seventh onward. So this she has explained, and this is the correct answer. Even I have very good student in my class. A common mistake. Uh, currently we conducted a PTM. And during that time. She is a brilliant child, but what she did? She forgot to distrib apply distributive property. So I always, whenever a bracket come, I always say, Adya, what we say? While putting an arrow, whose birthday? Kavita man's birthday. Cake cutega, sab mein batega. Oh, very nice. Okay, how nice.
Okay, so you've seen a you've seen a range of these. There are there are many more examples uh, that we have together come up with, right? Um, there's some you know uh, since we there's a group over there who speaks the same language as me, programming, and we've done some very crazy nasty pieces of code with some terrible mistakes in them that you know require. So here are some uh, suggestions that I would I would make, right? When I first started doing these things, uh, I also got a little bit overexcited. And I, I did something that I want to share with you, which I do not ever do. Okay, these are like war stories. Don't do this. Some, I'm telling you, sure, share bad examples. Share bad examples of assessment design also, right? So when I first started doing this, again, I teach programming. I said, oh, I'll make my life simple. I'll make it MCQ, uh, right? And this thing. So I, I had a whole bunch of these questions where I say, okay. Um, here is the a task. Here are four ways of solving it. For every way that is correct, just say it's correct. And for every one that is wrong, tell me why it's wrong. Give me an input on which the code fails. Hmm. Uh, MCQ, simple, you know, we can give lots of these on an exam, you know, easy to make, etc. Right? My students gave me this feedback, which I thought was very wise of them, much wiser than me. In, in designing the question. They said, look, we understand you make these questions. We know what you're trying to do. Make us think very nice. But please remember, we are in an exam. We are in a stressful environment. And you are presenting us code that you yourself have designed to look right. And now you're asking us, if it is right, just say right. Now, what if I think it is right, and I've said right, and it's not right, it's wrong. How many marks are you going to give me? All that time that I have spent thinking about it, falling into the trap that you designed for me, I've, that's a waste of time. Please give me an opportunity to show what I know. I thought that was a very wise statement from my students. Right? It is a terrible idea to give this question in that form. So I've stopped doing that entirely. Right? Firstly, you know, multiple choices, you know, same task, they have to think of four different solutions. That is also complicated. What's the difference? It's too many, too much cognitive load. So instead, I just keep it the way you saw me keeping it, right? So I just give it in, in this style, right? I just give them a single solution and I tell them it's wrong. I also... And again, in your domain, you'll have to think about what the equivalent thing looks like. Suppose I, as a student, cannot find the mistake. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. It looks right. I cannot see the mistake. How do I demonstrate that I know something about this? Right? Now, I can tell you what I can do in my domain. I do not know what the equivalent is in uh, all domains represented here, chemistry and physics and science. And I don't know what the, uh, the equivalent is. But here's what I do. For a question like this, for median, or for any pretty much any CT kind of uh, task, where it's a you know step-by-step -step process, which is wrong, I'm expecting them to at least give me an input and show me that if they trace through the thing, you get an answer that is right. Now, you haven't shown me that it's wrong. But what have you shown me? At least you can come up with that it is right. You can at least trace it through, right? Just trace through the algorithm, step by step, do the tasks, right? Something like that. At least show me that when x is 17, you get something. Or, you know, I don't know. This may not make sense here. But if you pick a value, can you show me how the operations work, right? Maybe in doing that, maybe in doing that, if I picked x equals something, uh, you know, I, I, I would show, like, for example, OK, the correct answer is x is equal to 8. Suppose I guessed x is 10. At least show me that x is 10 doesn't work. right? So I haven't showed you what the right answer is, but I've showed you that 10 is not the right answer. Maybe while doing that, I realize the error. I, so this gives the students a chance of catching the mistake. Because after all, what is the mistake? It's a generalization of a particular error. This is some generalized expression. And there is some generalized mistake that is being uh, caused by uh, dividing that way, I mean, by moving the two that way. So this is a possibility. I don't know if it works in all domains. Okay, So these kinds of things I would suggest to, to consider. If, if you believe, and we're almost out of time, but just to keep this last point, 
if you believe that there are such problems for which it is feasible for the student to explain either a correct answer or a partial answer, then I think, and, and, and it's fairly easy to evaluate, then my request would be, and I would be very, very happy to work with teachers who are willing to explore like this, let's try and see if we can develop such questions. Let's try and see if we can introduce a small number of such questions wherever we can. Our thinking in doing so would be, we are trying to gradually build our students' ability to critique, not just create. Right? And as I said, if you believe with me that that's an important ability going forward, then I think this is activities that can start as early as school education. Okay? So that was the pitch. I would, we have two minutes left. I would, oh, I have five. There we go. I have five. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this approach. And you know, based on your experience, in your context, where do you think it might have potential? Where do you think, like maybe in your domain, you feel this is completely not feasible. Let's hear that. I would love to hear that. Anyone? Yeah. One sec. Let, let us capture this. <laughs> I just wanted to make it a point here that uh, for programming, this is a great idea. And this has already been there, uh, like finding the syntax error, debugging the logical errors, and also the, like it's this has been there for the time like I started teaching programming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is coming in maths also and other subjects that's definitely going to help the students uh, identify that, I mean, apply their critical thinking and instead of just giving out the solution which can sometimes come out from cramming and uh, sure. I mean, just, just maybe reiterating, doing some similar problem solutions like I did one, there are five more similar ones. But when there is a different kind of error coming in, they will that will surely force the students to think and apply the critical thinking. Sure. So that's I see definitely that should be there in the paper. Yeah. Thanks. I think. Yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah no, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Was there another one? Oh, sorry. I'll yeah, give yeah. us it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, go ahead. You can go first. No, um, I think I heard your explanation about that when you kept it in MCQ format, the difficulties that you faced. But I'm still uh, not sure to keep these kind of questions only as open-ended ones, um, as far as writing their explanations are concerned. Because when we, we have made such questions earlier also to target the misconceptions. So we, uh, in MCQ formats, we have the option to give distractors which are very close. J because uh, in mathematics especially, for example, fractions or, you know, the decimal point number. So their distractors kind of made us, give us that data how a child is thinking. Like there could be two or more ways to go into misconception, not a single way only. So, so yes, in general, if you are asking it in MCQ format, coming up with a good distractor is usually the hardest part of making a good MCQ. So as I said, what I like about this is, yes, it's limited in the sense that there is only this one misconception. Uh, but as I said, finding that needle in a haystack that otherwise looks good, I think is an important skill also to, to, to develop, right? So, yeah. And so as I said, if you structure it step by step, that I think solves some of the earlier point that you made about, you know, the form factor could be otherwise too wild. Yeah. I just thought when I heard about your approach on critique, hmm. that as we move forward, hmm. uh, the online scams would increase. Yeah. So if we develop this ability in our students to critique right from the beginning, I think that they'll fall less into these kind of scams because they are rapidly increasing. No, absolutely. As I said, I think, I think you can bring this ability in all kinds of form factors, right? Mm -hmm. Like I was just thinking, for example, uh, you know, taking some viral story based on some aspect of something you learned in history, but I'm, you know, twisting the historical fact to make this point about, oh, look, this happened. Uh, you know, or something like that. Some 
you know, you can pick, pick, create such a thing. Now, which of these stories do you believe? Which of these WhatsApp forwards do you believe? You know, something like that, right? You know, what would you do based on this WhatsApp forward and this WhatsApp forward, or based on this WhatsApp forward and this website? You know, uh, what would you do? What would you do to in, in this kind of thing? And yes, if we can contextualize it in the real world, uh, you know, we should. Okay, Anil, what's our deadline? Uh, are we out of time? Yeah. 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 Okay, I want to just, I know, I know there's, there's several things. I, yeah, yeah, no, I just want, so there is, a, in the AI panel discussion, there was a lot of um, uh, discussion, very rightly so, about, you know, uh, some of the uh, misconceptions, some of the mistakes these, these uh, uh, LLMs can do, but we also talked a lot about how good they are, right? So I was completely unaware of this prize, uh, this, this style of uh, problems, there's something called the ARC Prize. Uh, take a look at these. And for now, if you want AI-proof puzzles, right? Uh, this is a very, very promising area. And I just wanted to share this with you, right? Look, all of us as humans, I know this is a little washed out, but hopefully everyone can see, right? People online have a huge advantage. You can see it without the lights. So what it's saying is, somehow this has become this, and somehow this has become this. Based on those two examples, can you, dear human, tell me what this becomes? This has become that. Example one input has become example one output. Example two input has become example two output. So can you tell me what this does? Very good. Square gets filled with the dark blue. All of us got it, right? Can you believe that these GPTs and can't, they can't do this? They can't do this. I mean, they are terrible at this. And this, you know, a lot of these um, things, these challenges for what AI can and can't do, the, the performance has been, you know, the, initially the benchmark comes out and this boom, GPT becomes really good at solving it, right? This thing has apparently been out for four years. The only reason I heard about it was finally somebody put a million dollars prize behind it. So you get a million dollars for coming up with a uh, GPT-based kind of AI-based solution that can solve these kinds of problems, right? And right now there's a leaderboard here. Where I think the state of the art is something like 40% last I checked, right? And they said, you know, most humans can easily solve these problems. And we are better than AI at this, right? There is something very deep about what the nature of thinking is uh, what the nature of machine learning is. This is the point uh, uh, Jam was making earlier in the panel discussion. And I think there is a lot to explore here. Today, if I'm telling you this ability to critique is very important to develop, I want to stress that I only am sure about it today. If tomorrow the AI comes out with a self-critic, which by the way, OpenAI has recently released a paper saying that that's what they're doing, I don't know for sure if this is something we should be teaching. So I'm, I, when I put this abstract in, I felt it was a good idea. But I also knew this is an idea which may not survive the test of time. Right? As teachers, as educators, I think we have to keep at least some sort of an eye on this. I hope events like this are something that you find one way to share ideas with each other. I'd love to learn from you all next time. Okay? Yeah. This way of critiquing towards LLM's ability to be perfect will make it perfect eventually. <laughs> it's quite possible. They have taken a lot of what we know, right? I mean, yeah. Okay, Sonia, all yours. No, no, no. No, I'm done. I'm done. I know there were questions. I would, yeah, qu comments. Yeah. Problem with mathematics is comprehension. Hmm. I mean, for children, problem is comprehend comprehending problem. And critic come, will come later. I mean, if they are able to really communicate, yeah. comprehend, then of course we'll be taking them towards critic. And I think this is, for me, it's a good takeaway. It's a platform through which we can give such opportunities because they will not be able to identify mistakes until unless they are able to comprehend the problem and communicate. That's also language. I mean, the language of mathematics is is the best way, you know? So I think this is the best way to learn that. But I think we should experiment. We should, Somewhere of course. Some. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. Sir, do you have a question? Oh, okay.
Uh, sir, I just wanted to add that uh, I really like this idea of Pratek because this will not only uh, enable a student to know what correct thing is, but it will also enable the student to learn what things are wrong in that particular concept. Because uh, in order to check that whether something is right or wrong, the, the person should know the concept behind it. Like yeah. for example, uh, the, the thing we have seen in row 3, yeah, the yeah, person yeah. should know that that concept of taking out common value, it, it is only possible in, in either addition or subtraction. Yeah. Similarly, the, the thing that we have taken in LCM, that the LCM has to be taken in whole and not for a single component in addition subtraction. Yeah, so I guess and, and I'm sure there are you know theories of learning that talk about this. Again, I'm not an expert in some of this, but there are, I know there are experts here that talk about, you know, do we just present positive examples, positive and negative examples? Certainly, machines, when you talk about machine learning, you need both for it to understand the concept well. I think to some extent, humans also do well in that. Thanks, yeah. You had a yeah. afterwards. Yeah, the yeah. Last thought. Oh, we I was just saying humans have a confirmation bias. Humans have a confirmation bias. So we tend to not we look we tend to look for examples that confirm our theories or hypotheses yeah. and not look for enough things that disprove it or falsify it yeah. and that leads us to a lot of false assumptions. There's also if somebody's interested in this, yeah. there's a task called the Vason car task, W A S O N, and it's a good example for that. Okay. Very good. So I kind of try to build on that bias, right? Because when I say we write a, a solution that looks right, I'm, I'm, I'm leveraging your system one to think, ha ah, ha, that's right, that's right, must be right, it must all be right. And what well, the worst thing is, as I said, the AI will definitely do that for us, right? It'll produce pretty stuff, right? Okay? So it's like a fallacy. Yeah, but as I said, in, it's not like out and out or some, some sort of, uh, you know, it's, it's stuff that could have been right, but but isn't and it's because eventually at least in my view where i'm leading here this into is preparing our students for this ai world where stuff is not what it seems to be right as ma'am was saying earlier right so yeah So thank you so much, Viraj, for making this possible. So we have been talking, I think, for the last one year. And uh, we are very fortunate that Viraj could make it. And I hope all of you had an exciting session. But also so that you don't miss what happened in the other hall, we have Jyoti who's going to explain to you one puzzle, take it home and solve it. Okay, Just two minutes. Jyoti, over to you. Can we unstream? No, no, it's all live stream. <laughs> We don't unstream till the closing ceremony. Okay, okay so um, I don't know how to do this. I don't have slides, but I want you to take two pa Is it pages. To be yes, I actually give everybody one. It's not enough to go around. Okay, so in front of you are some puzzles. The challenge is the following: you have a stamp that can produce half a heart. You have to fold the sheet in front of you, cut out the outside of the card fold it somehow and then when you cut a half heart you should see the picture on the paper i'm sure none of that made sense so let me draw this on the board okay let's get i'll go flying <laughs> okay so for example supposing i had something like that Okay, if I were to fold it in half, what I would now see is something like that. I have a stamp of that shape, right? So I do some sort of folding, stamp it through, open it out, and I need to see the picture in the card. Okay, so more puzzles will come when the rest of the gang comes. How wet is the ink? Huh? How wet is the ink? <laughs> there is no ink involved. No, 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 no. It's like a cut, a dike, a cu cutting stamp. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for asking that. I would have had some very confused people. So, no, it's like, um, yeah. Three hearts. 
थ्री हाँ तो एक्चुअली सो ये भी एक प्रॉब्लम है आपके पास जो पजल्स हैं वो बहुत मुश्किल वाले हैं सो उससे पहले ओके दिस इज सो सोनिया टोल मी वाई नॉट डू इट ह्योर ऑल्सो सो काइंड ऑफ हॉज पॉज वर्शन of what we did next door here is a whole set there's definitely not enough for everyone but you're welcome to take a look yeah yeah so so this is one between a bench ha so usme agar aap dekho to shuru wale to at least reasonably aasan hai singi ka chappu wo bhi explain kar dena aap kyun ko bhi dena are unko de denge kar lo aap khatam kar Oh, then I would rather give it to them. Because they, they can give it to them. Yes, give it to them. Okay. It's written in it, Sonia. You said that they have given the problem statement. Yes, they have given them. No, they don't tell them. But I can handle them. Yeah, they can do it. Okay. You can explain it. Right. So, I mean. Okay. This is the opposite of pedagogically good. Because we are giving two different rules. No problem. Okay. You have to leave now. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. No problem. Yeah. 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 So maybe make your fold. We'll verify with scissors once the scissors arrive. So how many folds are we supposed to? Oh, okay. There's no bound on the number of folds. Do what you want. There's only a bound on single one stamp, one cut. मतलब one curved cut, one half heart. हाँ, so आप सिर्फ एक half heart काट सकते हैं. जस्ट एम big enough to for you to actually do so the early ones you can draw out like she's doing you can just draw out the lines it gets a little harder so for instance you might be inclined to fold twice but then you'll get an extra heart okay. i'm just supposed to cut out the three hearts you can only cut yes exactly three hearts with a single half heart shaped cut i would fold here and then i would fold oh, okay. here Thanks, only a single cut is it sir? yes you This is what you are allowed to cut. Okay, so I would fold it four ways then. One, two, so one. Yeah, I'm going to cut. And then I can simply go walk off here. There's a question. Question? 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 कट्टर है जो एक हाफ हार्ट का शेप काट सकता है पेपर में से तो आपको इस पेपर को फोल्ड करना है मोड़ना है ताकि ना ना हर एक कार्ड ओके सो ये जो इंडिविजुअल कार्ड्स है हाँ सो द फोल्डिंग यू कैन डू व्हाट यू वांट बट वंस यू कट इट आई शुड सी ओनली द पिक्चर ऑन द कार्ड नो एक्स्ट्रा होल्स ओके सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर आप पजल आर देखोगे तो so, इसमें अगर आप दो बार फोल्ड करोगे राइट सी फोल्ड इट वंस हॉरिजॉन्टली वंस वर्टिकली फोल्ड इट वंस मोर थ्रू द सेंटर ऑफ द हार्ट इफ यू वर टू कट इट नाउ व्हाट वुड यू एंड अप यू वुड एंड अप विद फोर हार्ट्स व्हिच वुड नॉट बी व्हाट वी वांट आई वांट एग्जैक्टली द पिक्चर ऑन योर कार्ड टू बी हां सिंगल कट का आपको समझ में आएगा नो मैटर फॉर No, no. Okay. So the uh, actually, uh, maybe I'll do one. Hold on. I'll bring mine. Hold on a second. Yeah. Do you mean to say you want the line of symmetry over here? In the yeah. early ones, they're all nice and symmetric. They okay. stop being so very symmetric in a minute. No, exactly. Yeah. What do you want? I want to see. Isi shape ka ek hole 
no cuts to the boundary and wo heart shape on your table exactly so do heart aapke table ke upar aur aise ek card jisme do chhed hai heart shape on the so isme agar aap main main just leke aane wo just one second सो सोल्यूशन कैसा रहेगा कुछ ऐसे राइट सो आई एम शोइंग एन ईजी वन फॉर यू सो दिस इज एक जिसमें चार हार्ट है कैन रिमेंबर कौन सा है पी ने दिस वन वुड बी नो इट वुड बी एच राइट नो 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 पी 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 ओके सो दिस इज द सोल्यूशन टू पजल पी आई डेंट हाँ परफेक्ट ओके ओके शो इट टू द कैमरा ऑल राइट ओके पजल पी बट दे डोंट नो द होल शीट Why did you have to see only one heart? When I divide it, I have to get one single half heart. Okay, half heart. a quick announcement. Everybody, please uh, collect your participation Can certificates from the boys here. And uh, can we have the Queen poster presentation it. teachers Maybe on stage? Let's do this one. Poster presentation teachers on stage, please. Poster presentation teachers, please come in quickly. You can take one of these. Oh, what a mess! Okay, so all this. Hey, go on stage. Poster presentation directly on stage. Yeah. Okay. So if these are more puzzles. You can play yeah, just. Yeah. Take, take. There's Whoever has not. Photos so alone. Hey, anybody who was not in the photo yesterday for their certificates, please come on stage. You must get this photo, right? Certificates you collect from our volunteers. Photo के लिए जाओ ना. मैं तो बोल रही हूँ जाओ photo लो. You have to make sure everybody can be seen. Hi. So he's waiting, right? Okay. Please let me just wrap. All good. Yeah. Okay. Where are you keeping it? ओके रेड टेबल ठीक है यही अच्छा ठीक है ठीक द स्टूडेंट्स हैव ऑर्गेनाइज्ड योर सर्टिफिकेट्स अल्फाबेटिक ऑर्डर सो दे आर रिक्वेस्टिंग यू टू कलेक्ट इट ऑन द वे आउट ओके पार्टिसिपेशन सर्टिफिकेट्स प्लीज कलेक्ट लो ना नहीं नहीं यहाँ से जाने के लिए अभी क्या बात एक दस मिनट में रात को करेंगे एक पाँच वे आर डूइंग द क्लोजिंग सेरेमनी कम इन ए टीचर्स हुआ नॉट देयर यू कैन गिव इट टू ज्योति आई एम शर ज्योति विल मेक शर दे गेट इट
आई डोंट नीड टू ज्वाइन मुझे क्यों तंग कर रहा है मुझे क्यों तंग कर रहा है नहीं है ना गीता है ना Yeah, we are closing. Done. Go na. Come now. Chitra. Go na. Okay, done. Okay, see, those who have not got, please take it later because now we are going to the last five minutes. Certificates are there for everybody. Please contact the volunteers and they will give it to you. Okay, can we have a quick round of applause? They have put in a lot of effort. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So, can I have Neel Dara and Geeta with me on stage? Geeta and Neel Dara. She's gone out. Okay. We'll get her. Don't worry about it. We'll just let. Okay, as we always say, all good things must come to an end. So I know it's been a very, very exciting two days, and I am not going to take too much of your time. But I would like to just briefly tell you, and I'm sure all of you have seen that CTIS is growing every year, and we had abstracts from more than 15 states. so we you should have a round of applause because it's you who've done it right so uh when neel dara spoke in opening right she said that i it was my it was my dream let me put it that way that i want at least 200 abstracts but okay that dream came true because of you so thank you so much and i would like to say it's not just the growth in the number of abstracts but the quality of presentations has has shown a marked improvement i think the program is really deepening in each of your schools and we are really happy to see that so i would like to officially close ctis 2024 thank you so much stop the stream so please collect your certificates from outside and anybody who wants to go to science activity center can go yeah ankesh is there you can go uh shanti ma'am can you please certificate yeah so please collect certificates for all your teachers no no even our online teachers please now get the certificate